Hearty afternoon, everyone. Uh, this afternoon, very briefly, uh, Dr. Romande, we'll be sharing uh, really about our national apprenticeship system. We'll have a look at the general MSME ecosystem. We'll have six areas of focus today. We'll have one, the current apprenticeship model the current state and the future state. We look at the areas of strength in Jamaica, and I heard the youngsters a while ago mentioning some of them, um, access, which is one. So we look at the national MSME ecosystem. As anybody who runs a, a micro firm or any small business needs to have a great appreciation for the national uh, MSME ecosystem because there's lots to gain from that. And of course, We'll be looking at what heart does in this particular ecosystem. And then finally, we look at the nexus between apprenticeship and MSME. Now, so MSME is the acronym for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Um, in some countries, it's, it's, it, the classification is done based on your gross annually in our national policy. You're a micro firm if you're earning less than 100,000 US dollars or 15 million Jamaican dollars, they say. In other jurisdictions, you're, you're, you're classified based on the number of, of team members, employees you have. So that's, that's how the classification is done in, in varied jurisdiction. Now, apprenticeship and I want everybody here to see apprenticeship as a tool. Apprenticeship is not new to Jamaica. Let me just first clear that up. Apprenticeship came about as early as 1954, the Apprenticeship Act. And interestingly, the act came about, when you read the act of 1954, it came about to solve, guess what? The labor issues we were having more than 60 plus years ago. And interestingly, we are having that same conversation now. A number of sectors have been saying to the trust that we want labor, we want more, we want persons on the ground. And we, through that, is expanding our apprenticeship model. We are scaling apprenticeship to ensure that our trainees are in the, in, in the, the, the workspaces, on, in the firms, so they are applying and getting that. But there are some misconceptions about apprenticeship. And sometimes persons use the term apprenticeship, they use the term placement, they use the term intern internship interchangeably. And I want to, you know, change up that misconception. For it to be called apprenticeship, there are some key variables that must be in place. There must be workplace of, um, exposure, that's the first thing. And in many cases, the work exp workplace exposure is normally 80 or 70% based on the skill area. So it must be, there must be workplace exposure, and it's normally between 80 and 70%. We have some youngsters now from Jagas, I see Jagas manager here, on the apprenticeship program, and they're completing level three at JUTC. They spend four days on the job, and one day getting that underpinning knowledge. So it's critical they spend more time in industry, and they spend a shorter time learning that underpinning knowledge, which is also very important. For it to be called apprenticeship, there must be a contractual relationship, as our 2019 Heart Act states currently, it's between the trainee and the firm. It's my thinking, and I've said it to my MD who spoke this morning, that it should be among, it should be the trust, the training, the training provider, the trainee, and the firm. But currently the Act speaks to between, between the trainee and the firm. So there must be a contractual relationship. So a contract, as it's called, registered apprenticeship. Thirdly, there must be skills development. And when I say skills development, there, there, are, there are a number of things. Because one of the natural process of apprenticeship is mentorship. And everybody that spoke earlier spoke about the soft skills. When you're in apprenticeship, learning from that of a senior craftsman, they call it, in the act, you naturally get mentorship. It's natural. 
So that skills development must be critical. The most important variable, however, for apprenticeship, it must be industry-led. No apprenticeship program can survive unless industry is at the forefront. So we have to hear from industry. Industry are the persons who set the standards. So what they call in quality, what the ILO call in quality apprenticeship, social dialogue. The social dialogue must be constant. It must be constant because you need to know, know what you're delivering. No, but as the training provider, you must also have some amount of foresight to know where the industry is going so the standards can also be prepared for where, where they are going. Again, we, are, we, we spoke about how much AI is impacting the space. And I believe, again, I, I, the only tool to help us when industry pivots, because in, a number of industries will have to pivot quickly, is the tool of apprenticeship. Now, so that's pretty much the current model we have. If you look, however, at where we are going, because currently the trust, since merge, and many, all the persons here know that we have merged, the Heart NSDA Trust would have merged with the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, the National Youth Service, the Apprenticeship Board, and Legacy Heart. Since that merger, a number of apprenticeship and apprenticeship type programs, what they call a registered apprenticeship program, the, the, um, the School Leavers Training Opportunity Program, the National Service Corps Program, the, um, the Graduate Work Experience Program. There are a number of programs, and sometimes it's very difficult for our stakeholders to understand the difference among all these variations and what each of them uh, bring to the table. So going forward, what we'll be doing is to standardize the process. You'll have four clear tiers of apprentices. You'll have an entry trainee apprentice, you'll have an intermediate apprentice, you'll have an advanced apprentice, and of course, you'll have a proficient apprentice. And this simply means that at each, it's a very tiered system, you can enter and exit at any point with your varying qualification. And this model also will assist us in scaling apprenticeship, because one of the things we want to do is to scale apprenticeship. Currently, apprenticeship is seen as a tool for only the heart NSTA trust. However, we strongly believe when we scale apprenticeship, the community colleges or even the universities can use this particular tool. I was in the UK recently looking at their model and the University of, of uh, Sheffield, they have a very strong apprenticeship program and a number of the community colleges, we, Barnsley was our host, Brand, um, Brantford was, a, was also one of the, one of the colleges I, I visited. They have a very strong apprenticeship program and it is critical for us to scale the program here and not see apprenticeship only as a hard thing, as, an, as a hard NSTHS tool, but a tool for national development. What are some of the strengths of our national apprenticeship system? We in Jamaica have a national training agency, which is something that we must applaud ourselves for. And it's a very vibrant, you saw our MD this morning, how vibrant and energetic, energetic she is. Of course, and, I, and I'm very happy earlier, one of the youngsters spoke about accessibility. The heart NSTA trust, our training system, our apprenticeship system is very accessible. And our PM earlier this year spoke about, and the, and, and the young lady spoke about it. It's you can access all our system right up to level four in apprenticeship free of cost, no out of pocket cost. Thank you. The other thing we have here in Jamaica is a framework, a policy, a governing framework and the 2019 Heart Act Starting from 1954, we moved to 1982, and now we have the 2019 Art Act, which speaks to traineeship and apprenticeship. We now have that framework in place to assist us to do what we must do in apprenticeship. Areas of improvement, and I, I, I think I, I made mention of a few of them a few minutes ago. We want to expand apprenticeship. We want to build a culture. In the UK and, and in Finland and those countries, Apprenticeship is a culture for small firms. A firm, instead of employing a junior team member, they, 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 they onboard apprentices. So they see apprenticeship as a tool to treat with their strategic workforce planning. 
Very, very important. So in Jamaica, we want to create a culture because, you know, there are some issues with apprenticeship in Jamaica. They are because of its relationship to post-slavery, because of the, the parental um, thinking in Jamaica, that is a lower level thing, the parental, go, go do your thing like a boy. That kind of stigma still prevail. So we want, we want to change that narrative and create a strong culture of apprenticeship, that it's a tool that you can do a degree in apprenticeship through the apprenticeship tool. So we want to change that culture and that narrative. We want to also review the, the, the 2019 Heart Act, which is being done right now, because the Heart Act speaks to traineeship, and traineeship by international standards, it's really pre-apprenticeship, and I can go into the definition, because apprenticeship, for it to be apprenticeship, it must be a year and more. Traineeship is below one year with the same tools. So you have to be very clear as to the how, um, how we, we, we use our terms. Now, there are a number of players in the national MSME ecosystem. We have our DBJ. We have the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce. We have the Jamaica Business Development Corporation. We have the JAMPRO. And many of these persons play a critical role in the MSME ecosystem and they provide grants, colleagues. For those inside the room who have their little small business, engage these people because they can assist you. Um, let's look at the role hard play now and our footprint in the MSME ecosystem. Now, the hard trust, the hard trust, we have a number of MSME support program. We have the, what we call the MSME support program. I'm, uh, thank you. We have the MSME support program where we support micro firms. And remember I said micro firms, by definitions are firms earning less than 15 million Jamaican dollars. We give these firms, we allocate 10 million Jamaican dollars annually to support these firms in the tune of $1 million. And we give them inputs towards stimulating their businesses. But we don't only give them the inputs, we also provide the technical support, the handholding for 24 months so that these businesses can grow, they can increase efficiency, they can, they can increase in growth, and of course, profitability. We also have what we call a trainee startup program. Annually, we give over 100 of our trainees injection in their startups annually. And these trainees get up to 300,000 Jamaican dollars to stimulate their small businesses. And again, we don't only give them these, these inputs, but we also provide them with the technical support, the handholding, expo um, ex uh, expose them to TAJ, expo expose them to... Um, to make productivity center and all the players in the ecosystem to ensure that these businesses grow. We also have Jampro. We have a partnership. We have incubators. And of course, my colleagues here would know how, it, how dear the incubators are to my heart. And we provide these small firms with a safe space to flourish for 24 months so these businesses again can grow. But we also have partners. We partner with the Jamaica 4 H Club. And this only, only this week in the Gleaner, you'll see where we support that particular project this year in the tune of 30 million Jamaican dollars. But over a three-year period, we're supporting REAP. REAP is an acronym for Rural Youth Economic Empowerment Program, where we're supporting, we're supporting rural youth farmers to, again, stimulate their business because there's a huge gap between the rural and urban poor. So we're supporting that particular project in the tune of $75 million over three years. We also have Jampro, and Jampro, they do export max. And for those companies, the minister in charge of, of this will tell you, if you have a business, you're not thinking about export, you're not, you don't have a business as yet. So export max is really a, 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 a program to assist you to increase your export potential. So they help you to increase your market share overseas. Very important. And we also have Farm Up Jamaica. And Farm Up Jamaica is one of those projects out there in, a, in Hanover where we're doing farming. And farming, and the, the critical thing about this is that it's, 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 it's farming where it's very, very, very technical and we are, again, exposing our trainees to this particular thing. Now, what's the nexus between MSMEs and apprenticeship? It's critical because apprenticeship is that bridge. It's the bridge consider a bridge between school and work. All firms, all micro firms, you should be thinking about getting an apprentice 
in your space because there are benefits. I know many Jamaicans don't know that when you have an apprenticeship in, in your firm, you get a rebate from the trust. You don't know that when you have a, an apprentice in your firm, you don't pay any taxes, any 3% tax on that particular, um, the salary for that particular apprentice. So there are a number of benefits. Um, so it's about providing that socioeconomic environment that the firms can grow. And apprenticeship is, is that tool that provides that kind of environment. And, I've, and again, I spoke about the training funds. The training funds where we, we help you, and in this instance, is, in this instance the trust pays the stipend for many of these apprentices. Provision of vouchers and the same, the same um, rebate I spoke about earlier. Provision of rebate and many firms, you see, you'll find many of the firms these days, many of the larger companies starting universities. You hear about the Salas University, you hear about Fosterich University because they see the value of apprenticeship. So we want the micro firms to also benefit from this tool. And of course, it's critical that as an organization, we continue the partnership, what we call the continued social dialogue between firms, between industry, because we cannot do this without, this, uh, without industry. Colleagues, thank you very much.